I guess that's why Charlie called it the Has Been Hotel. Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! It was actually my idea. Ha <laughs> ha Well, it's not very clever. Ha <laughs> ha! Fuck you. Okay. <laughs> well, guys, you could just call me Lucifer because I'm depressed. Has Been Hotel is sadly over. But now that I've finished the show, I can't help but want to discuss what we're all thinking. Is Has Been Hotel better than Hell of a Boss? I mean, that's the big question, right? It's pretty rare that a spinoff series comes out before the thing it's spinning off from, so... I think this makes for a pretty interesting topic. It's really funny, because if you think about it, we did this whole thing backwards. Like, we were introduced to the world and the elements prematurely in Hell of a Boss, so it's pretty tough to now go back and look at Has-Been without really comparing the two. But fuck it. Why not? It's it's fun. I do want to preface that I was never the biggest fan of the Has-Been Hotel pilot. I think I only watched it, like, twice when it came out, and I thought it was good for sure, but it just didn't seem like it was going to be my cup of tea. And, and that's just me being real here. I thought this shit was going to be like the most edgy, hot topic, mid-2010s ass like show. But granted, those elements are there, but it really isn't that. Like, it looks like that. But when you watch it, it's like, oh shit. Like, huh. There's actual depth here. Wow. <laughs> Who would have thought? Not me. Vivzy cooked with the show. Like, shit, the whole team cooked. I, I feasted. And after watching that shit, I could hibernate for the next six months. But no show is perfect. I want to give you all my comprehensive review while also comparing the positives and the negatives that come with Has Been and its sister series, Hell of a Boss. So we're going to break this shit down into categories because, you know, timestamps and all that. What better way to do it than starting with the storytelling? Don't worry, Mom. I'll make you proud. Charlie? Ah! Oh, shit. Did you hear all that? Ooh, we're gonna get controversial. <laughs> I want to start with Hasbin Hotel since this is the big talk of the town right now. Is the storytelling in Hasbin Hotel good? Key word here, storytelling. We're talking about the establishment of the setting characters, the means in which those things are explained to you, not if the story being told is good. That's obviously very subjective and your mileage may vary. I for one do think the story is good. It's not the most amazing story ever, but what it does have that carries it is it's unique, something new, refreshing, different. That alone goes a long way in my book. I mean, dude, the storytelling through these musical numbers and the background details are so good. I mean, I'm noticing new things every time I watch it, and there's a lot of stuff that I'm shocked people aren't noticing. I want to bring up the trial in episode 6 because I've seen a lot of people misinterpret the purpose of the trial. I've heard people say things like, it implies Angel was worthy to go to heaven after only a couple of months of good behavior, but no, that, that's not it at all. The only goal for the trial was just to show, just to show, that a soul can improve. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. It was never, oh, look, Angel is good now. See, look, he can go to heaven. Look. No, 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 no. That's, that's not it at all. I promise you guys this episode is infinitely better if you just take a moment and really understand the question they're trying to ask here. I want you to walk with me here. I'm gonna walk you down the path and you know, we'll take the baby steps. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you there, okay? So imagine this, if I'm a good person, right? And I make it into heaven, what's to stop me from becoming a shit person once I'm there? Adam is a prime example of that. He made it there first, so there's no one that feels valid in checking him on his shit. Because of this, he can drop F-bombs here and there willy-nilly and no one bats an eye. Yet Charlie does the same thing and, oh my god, how could she do such a thing? This is the point. The hypocrisy at play. The song that follows is brilliant at displaying this as well. You have two lies being withheld from loved ones that each play an important role in the balance of the verdict, right? Both Sarah and Vaggie's lies are done to protect. Sarah trying to protect Emily from the harsh reality of their job, Vaggie protecting herself from the shame that she feels about her past. It's fucking great, man. Things start off pretty neutral, but then Adam lets out Sarah's secret. Oh shit, now it's looking like Charlie might win here. She has a compelling argument. Oh, oh and then bam, Adam reveals Vaggie's secret, giving them an out. 
As shown in the episode, none of them know what gets someone into heaven, so of course Sarah is just looking for an out and Adam hands it to her on a silver platter. Charlie and Emily's big momentum was on the premise of what they say in the song, if hell is forever, then heaven must be a lie. If angels can do whatever and remain in the sky. Yeah, 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 finish it, finish it, finish it. <laughs> no, okay. The reason why I bring that up is because that quote's important. If angels could just do whatever, right, it doesn't matter, and they could just stay in heaven, then what the hell's going on here, right? But, oh, how convenient. We now have Vaggie's secret out for everyone, and, oh, look, it's an angel that has fallen to hell for doing something she shouldn't have done. Oh, case closed, guys. Wrap it up. Now, of course, Sarah knows that this isn't, you know, a just ruling. She's trying to get an out. That is the purpose of it, right? We don't want to talk about this touchy topic here. And that push and pull is excellently portrayed in the music. It's just peak storytelling. Honestly, I, I could teach a whole lecture on this shit if I wanted to, but for the sake of time, I must move on. Pacing wise, I'm not even gonna pretend like it's not an issue because it is an issue. I mean, it's not enough to ruin my enjoyment, but I recognize the hardships that come with working under the budgets and the constraints of a big company, right? Like Amazon versus the loose and unrestricted freedom that you get when you do something more independent like hell of a boss. I think the perfect solution is just slightly longer episodes. Like, I think those issues would be ironed out. I don't think we're going to get a higher episode count. I got to be honest with you. Those of you who are expecting more than eight next time, uh, I wouldn't get my hopes up for that. At a certain point, though, you got to focus on what they managed to do with just a limited amount of time. It's really impressive if you think about it. I've said this many times in the past, but having people's biggest complaint be that the show is moving too fast is great because it just means that we care enough to want to spend more time in this world and really sit with these characters. That's a true testament to just how interesting the world is. So bringing it back to Hell of a Boss, it's kind of interesting to talk about because there really isn't much of a focus on telling a linear story, but more so a loose one with some plot threads that come back here and there. And it really depends on what your preference is. It's hard to speak on this for me because I'm, I'm biased. I'm going to tell you straight up. Like, I prefer linear storytelling, and that does give has been a slight leg up for me. However, however, Hell of a Boss does get to take its time because it's not rushing to a specific endpoint. An episode can just be at one place, focusing on one thing and telling one story. And honestly, some of the best stories are best told when they're done that way. And this is kind of where Hell of a Boss shines, really. I have a much greater attachment to the characters in Hell of a Boss because I got so much time to just sit with them and really understand them. Even so, despite all of that, I have to say the directing and the storytelling, not the story, but the storytelling, is better in Has Been Hotel. Thematically, there's a lot more to dissect, and the questions it poses are just, they're just ones that easily put it above Hell of a Boss for me personally. Hell of a boss is funnier, though. Am I interrupting something? Nah, man. Just having a conversation. Conversation leads to HPV. Okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm gonna start with Hell of a Boss this time, okay? I think this is where I really get to geek out, but... Dude, these guys rock. I love them all. You, you really feel that sense of found family between them, and that's something that I definitely see forming in Has Been Hotel, but that bond is... It's just nowhere near as strong. I'm a sucker for the found family trope, and this specific group feels really unique, and their dynamics are all very different, and I just enjoy any one of them hanging out with each other. It's just really cool to see. That feeling is pretty hard to find, especially only two seasons into a show. And oh my god, please don't get me started on Stolas, okay? Stolas is probably one of my most favorite characters in any cartoon. Uh, first off, I, I gotta say this, I'm so glad they changed the direction of his character from whatever that was in the pilot. The docile owl boy with the, with a gentle heart. This is Stolas. Not not that. No, 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 no. Not that, please. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my God. Despite him being a character that goes through a lot of shit that I personally can't really relate to, there are so many little things to his character. I'm like, oh, my goodness. I get you, brother. I, I feel you. And I, I just want him 
to have a happy ending. That's all I want. If the show, anything else could go to shit, but if Stolas gets the happy ending, I will be happy. And there's this episode in season two where it's young Stolas and, you know, he meets Blitzo for the first time. And you really get that background knowledge on how we ended up to where we are today. And that, to this day, is still my favorite episode of Hell of a Boss. And it's because... It really takes the time to focus on just these two characters and just focus on telling this one story and really making you understand, oh, that, that's why Stolas is like this. That's why he's like that. And I'm sure we're going to get episodes like that in Has Been Hotel for sure. I'm sure that's going to happen. It's just right now that hasn't happened. So it's not to say that Has Been Hotel is short on good characters. That's not the case at all. But none of them really hold a candle to any of the Hell of a Boss crew. And that's just me personally, right? I mean, my favorite character is Alistair and I barely know anything about the guy. Every other disrespectful wretch who dares to question me. Understood. Lovely. This conversation will be fun to revisit in a couple years when we've got some more seasons to work with. But as of right now, I got to give this to Hell of a Boss. The music, brother. Oh, my God. So I think we all know who's winning here. But before I cast judgment, let me just say Hell of a Boss's music is awesome. It's very awesome, but the talent we got with Hasbin is running circles. Not only its sister show, but goddamn Disney, bro. I've said this before, but I it needs repeating. They cooked. They cooked. And if Vivzi's teasing of season two's music holds true, we are not ready. We are not ready for the music, brother. <laughs> uh, this goes to Hasbin Hotel without a question. And they jump up there together. I love that shit, bro. This, this <laughs> there honestly wouldn't be a conversation if we didn't get into the animation. Hell of a Boss is a triumph. Despite being a web series with restrictions and the budget and the time, they still managed to go out of their way to crank out amazing shots that honestly, I, I'm just not sure how they're able to afford it. I don't think they can. <laughs> I think Hasbin Hotel, though, has excellent animation, but spends most of the creative shots on just the musical set pieces, which, you know, isn't really a problem, but it's not the same as what Hell of a Boss is doing. Hell of a Boss is punching above its weight with, like, in insane action and random bits of Sakuga that just make you go, ooh, <laughs> that's some good dopamine right there. Hold up. Hold up. Even so, I can't deny that Has Been Hotel is the more polished show. It just is, but that doesn't mean it downplays the crazy shit that Hell of a Boss is doing over there, okay? You could also argue that Hell of a Boss uses the animation to highlight bigger emotional moments more. A scene I simply love to look at is this really nice scene between Octavia and Luna. It's a very quiet, simple dialogue exchange where they're both just kind of talking it out, and yet the amount of frames and detail dedicated to it, it makes it stand out, and it becomes memorable because of it, and hey, money well spent. Try to cut your dad some slack. He may not always get it right, but he's trying. That's more important than you think. This shit is tough. Honestly, you could go either way and I wouldn't be mad at you. For the sake of the video, I'm just gonna technically give it to Hasbin Hotel because it is the better looking show on a more consistent basis. So there's that. But honestly, you could choose either. I wouldn't hate on you for it. You'd be a good boss. You say that with sarcasm, but... I totes would. <laughs> I guess we should talk about the acting. I mean, I don't have a ton to say here, but we can knock this out real quick. So Hell of a Boss has an awesome cast and they've been given great material to work with and it really shows off their acting chops in ways that I personally feel that has been has yet to get to yet. And, you know, this is kind of a hard thing to judge, but I would give it to Hell of a Boss here personally, just because they just got more shit to do, you know, more emotional, heavy hitting scenes and stuff. But of course, when it comes to the music and those performances, oh man, they got that shit locked down. I mean, uh, Charlie's goaded, okay? Um, uh, sort of. All right, let's see what the final score is here. Um, oh, <laughs> would you look at that? Uh, I guess that means has been is objectively better <laughs> yep uh case closed everybody wrap it up you know it's time to go home <laughs> but let's be real both shows are great and i couldn't blame anyone for favoring one of them over the other i mean me personally 
I find Hell of a Boss a lot more entertaining. Like, if I'm being honest, it's more funny. The characters, they're just way more up my alley. But that doesn't mean I'm not locked in to has been Hotel. I'm locked in. The music, the world, and the story, all that, that I'm, I'm there. But if you took the music out, that would heavily hurt the show for me personally. That's a big reason why I love has been Hotel so much is those damn songs. So for that reason alone, if I look at it objectively, yeah, you take the music out, what do I have left? A solid show. Whereas, you know, Hell of a Boss is, in my opinion, a lot more enjoyable. I'm laughing more consistently and I just really like the characters a lot more whereas has been I feel like yeah I'm liking these characters um I'm interested to see where they go but I'm like oh my god I love this character I love that character you know I'm not there yet but I would like to get there one day and that's why I kind of want to end this off talking about how we have a bright future ahead for both these shows I'm excited to see where we go you know two to three to four however many years down the line I'm I'm hyped okay I'm, I'm hyped if you're hyped click the damn like button or some shit I don't know Get, get that energy out of you. One last thing. Don't leave. Don't leave. Please, please don't leave. Don't leave. Don't leave. Did you leave? Oh, no, don't leave. Oh, you stayed. Okay. Let me tell you something. I have a new video that is going up on my second channel, Too Awkward, where I am ranking every single Hell of a Boss song. I also did a ranking for every Has Been Hotel song. A lot of people saw it. They all enjoyed it. Hey, maybe you should check out the new one. It should be up as soon as this video goes live. Click the link somewhere on the fucking screen. I don't know where it's at, but you better click on that shit and watch it, bro. Don't miss out on the two awkward content, baby. You left your mark. Yeah, you were here. You left your scar and disappeared. I feel.